What happened in practice for the Italian Grand Prix? It is Italian Grand Prix weekend, and it's time to start dreaming big. Well, actually, I already started that in the predictions, but of course, we've had FP1, FP2 today, and we've got a few big talking points, actually, to uh, discuss today. It's not just a typical Friday wrap-up. We've, yeah, there's been some drama today, hasn't there, Bomb Tellingham? There sure has. Got to Malaga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was quite the... The session, having a new driver in, well, two new drivers technically, one doing, of course, the whole uh, weekend and the rest of the season, and the other just doing FP1. Well, I say FP1, 10 minutes of FP1. What a beautiful segue, shall we? Because that is the big talking point that we have to discuss, and that was Kimi Antonelli, of course, getting uh, an outing in the Mercedes, taking George Russell's place in free practice one. And let's go with the initial the first five minutes, he was a one and a half seconds clear of Lewis Hamilton, and we all thought this is it. Championship the changing on. of the guard. Kimi Antonelli in for the rest of the season, George Russell out. No, but we did think, okay, he's going out there. He's sending it. This is why you like him, Tommy's, because he's uh, very aggressive in everything that he does on track. Uh, and he went straight out there, guns blazing, on the soft tyre, trying to, to push the car. Uh, but... The track's had a complete resurfacing, hasn't it? The, the, the curbs have changed. Uh, the tyres are reacting differently to the circuit than they have previously. And it, they've been speaking about it today that uh, the tyre the wears a lot higher. And uh, there's a lot of factors. Um, and unfortunately, all of those combined created Kimi going into the wall at the final corner. And um, not what you wanted at all. Uh, for a rookie, of course for someone with so much pressure on their shoulders. I don't think anyone's got this much media coverage in God knows how long. Probably since uh, Max, the, yeah. Yeah, the photographers were three rows deep before he came out the pits and uh, it ended in tears. Listen up, USF1 fans. We've got something very special for you. And yes, I'm sorry, it is only for US fans. This video is sponsored by City to let you know about the Aston Martin Aramco Formula One Experience Sweepstakes. That's right. At the end of May, City launched the sweepstakes to support their global partner, the United Nations World Food Programme, and the prize is pretty unbelievable. Should you win, the grand prize is a weekend experience watching the Aston Martin Formula One team in Austin, Texas. This includes a race experience for two, hotel accommodation of one room for you and your guest for two nights, plus coach class flights sorted as well. If you've never been to Austin before, I would highly recommend it. I had such a great time when I went there a few years ago. If you're unaware, the UN World Food Program is the world's largest humanitarian organization working to end hunger worldwide. They will provide life-saving meals to over 100 million of the world's most vulnerable people in more than 120 countries and territories. It's a pretty amazing cause. Now you know the backstory, how do you get involved? Well, when you make a minimum donation of $25 to the World Food Program USA, it earns you one entry into the sweepstakes. The end date is the 3rd of September 2024, so make sure to enter soon. Link is in the description below. It did. Uh, it's unfortunate that when you go off at a track like this, you know, maybe like a Abu Dhabi or something, other circuits, you maybe get away with it a bit more. Uh, but of course, gravel traps on these old school tracks. And it was a, it was a massive moment to lose the car completely. Of course, the safety car <laughs> the safety car did the same thing yesterday. Although that was, of course, losing their brakes. But for, for Antonelli to do that that early on in the session, you know, it was great that they he was pushing and wanted to make an impression. But yeah, it's a it's a it's put a huge amount of pressure on him again. Like all those those question marks of people going, is he too early? Because we have we've had the discussions of seeming very likely that he's going to get the seat. And the, the big question was it was kind of like, well, he's quick, but he's probably going to crash a bit. And we basically saw that condensed into 10 minutes of FP1. We did. Let's get into the first question from P1 Patreon member Chillar. Is Mercedes rushing Kimi Antonelli's development to replace Lewis Hamilton next year? He's 18 years old. He's only just turned 18 uh, a few days ago. Uh, so he is very young. And as we've just mentioned... There's a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's had media coverage like no other. He's the next this, he's the next that. And Mercedes do believe that, clearly. If they're willing to put him in the car, which is what we believe, uh, then he, he has the CV and the record 
to match the hype in some regard, right? You know, he he has been winning everything, and and he's and he's clearly taken the paddock by storm in what he has been doing in in junior categories. Um, there will be an element of or questions of rushing because he's 18, but Max Verstappen also crashed a lot, and it was funny because it was like. I tweeted saying that he was he'd crashed in FP1, and some people, and then I replied to a tweet basically saying, "Well, he's 18, he's had a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Doesn't matter how much natural talent you have, nothing can prepare you for the expectation that the world has for you when you roll out in free practice one." And I saw some people going, "Yeah, well, Max did it. Max won when he was 18 years old." And it's like, okay, but we, we don't need to directly compare. And you can't compare you can't, everyone's because Max yeah. crashed a lot as well when he first joined Formula One. And these are the drivers that aren't scared to push it to the limit. And I think in three, four, five years time, this won't even be a moment that we remember. No. Um, are they rushing him to answer that question? Yes, because they have to. Uh, and I think Toto Wolff has admitted that himself, that they don't want another Max Verstappen situation. They don't want another talent to slip through their fingers. I wonder... Because at the end of the day, had Lewis Hamilton not left for Ferrari, is Kimi Antonelli replacing Lewis Hamilton? No. <laughs> is he replacing George Russell? No. Um, it's because they've, you know, they've got that seat a bit earlier than they expected, so they ha they are having to rush his development uh, somewhat. Yeah, a huge learning curve uh, for Antonelli, and I think that, you know, they they I think it was Bradley Lord said that the advice that they gave him was for. To, to just enjoy it, get settled in, and it and it he's going to learn a hell of a lot from this, and it's just going to have he's going to have to rebuild his confidence slightly. He's going to have to know how to rein it in, but at the same time, I don't want to be sat here, kind of almost going against the fact that Mercedes have done this. It's an exciting thing. They've put a young talent in. It's a mistake. It's something that he will lose sleep over. I am sure over the coming weeks, but. At the same time, they have to start this development at some point if they are going to sign him next year. So, Do you not think Toto's radio message to told you everything you yes. need to know as well about the fact that it's like, it was? he might as well have said, don't worry, I don't care. Yeah, it, exactly. I could hear it in his voice. It, it, I don't think it really affected anything no. in terms of Antonelli and whether he'll be signed next year. That's my opinion anyway, because they know Mercedes aren't stupid. They know what they're signing up to by putting in an absolute rocket ship with no experience, which is Antonelli, essentially. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. OK, cool. Moving on. Well, actually, free practice one. Apart from that, that was obviously the big talking point. Verstappen was fastest. Uh, and then it was Leclerc, Norris, Sainz, and Bottas was the star of the session, I would have to say, uh, was was right up there throughout the entirety of it. And we're now questioning, OK, the stake have gone from two laps down in Zandvoort to now Monza ready. Uh, so <laughs> you do wonder whether they might actually be scrapping for a point. I'm not saying that Bottas is going to be in the top six, but get in that DRS train, you never know. Or have they gone for the Williams master plan of as soon as they saw Formula A and how no one retires anymore, they went, right, let's just build a car for Monza, bag a P7, and we'll finish ninth in the championship. We will see. Uh, moving on to free practice two then, and uh, Lewis Hamilton was fastest, three thousandths ahead of Lando Norris. Uh, then it was Sainz, Piastri, Leclerc, the top five. Uh, first question comes in from Chloe Darby one. Are Red Bull struggling for pace again? Now, of course, at 14th and 15th, I believe it was, uh, for free practice two for Red Bull. Now, they aren't that far off the pace, I think it's fair to say, but there are also a lot of struggles going on. Max not happy with the car once again. It's also worth mentioning his 14th place time was on the medium, so out of sync with with, with other drivers uh, and, and their run plans. Um, but no, they don't look bulletproof once again. And, and I don't think any of us expected that coming out of Zandvoort and seeing Max's struggles there. You don't just go, ah, click your fingers, everything goes away just because Monza's a, a different looking track. Red Bull have been struggling, as we keep saying, for many races now. And Max has just been hauling that second, third fastest car maybe at, at points uh, into still great positions. Uh, so yes, I, I think they are struggling again. Will they be fighting... McLaren for pole position. <laughs> I'm sure maybe for... Just Sorry, I thought I'd just I press muted. Just you could have just carried on. And That's crazy. Up, up Fair enough. Muted. No, I think we have to leave it in no, there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but coughing into my ears is quite distracting, Tommy. So <laughs> it's like when Hamilton was on the team radio and he heard someone laughing. You know, it's completely distracting. I, 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 
I failed my task to press me. <laughs> it's fine. But yes, Red Bull are struggling for pace. They are. Although Max was quickest in, in FP1 and it's a, a very different session. Uh, it's very easy to jump on the fact that they're 14th and 15th. It doesn't look great. All Formula 1 teams now share a graphic, don't they, after each session. And I'm sure there's a billion comments on Red Bull's graphic for FP2 going, oh my God, we're so finished. Uh, the, the, you know, the dream's over or whatever. But it's one practice session. They will uh, improve. They could struggle here, but I'd be amazed if they were 14 and 15. They're still going to fight somewhere um, near the front, uh, even if it's not the top. But yeah, at the exactly. Moment. We didn't even get like a, um, a reading from Perez because he went out and did his soft tire run right at the end when everyone else was on race runs and he was uh, sort of held up uh, there as well. So we, we but really what a weird don't looking have any wing they've got. We were chatting yeah. about that, weren't we, on WhatsApp? It's like a like dinosaur's before. taking a bite out of it. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. Um, it's so visibly different to everyone else. Uh, they, It's almost like they, they've gone, Adrian, Adrian, have you... Adrian, you've prodding gone, him, mate, do something. I reckon, what do you do? What would you do? Do, you, do? This? Yeah, what do you think? Like, just a little, like, just bite <laughs> out of the rear wing? We need to lose some, lose some drag here. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bizarre-looking rear wing. Very weird. We'll find out if it works, but uh, Verstappen... Didn't didn't look hugely happy. You know, had a, had a few moments himself. You know, mentioned like Antonelli. Um, obviously, he didn't spin off, but he had a, a moment at the Parabolica as well, like a lot of uh, people did. They they were really finding the limits, weren't they? All these drivers with the n not only the the track resurface, but the curbs have changed so much. Which I saw a lot of the drivers saying that's kind of ruined a bit of the character of Monza that they don't have these big yes. high curbs that you fly over anymore. They look kind of regulated just flat curbs which i do agree with them that that is a bit of a shame to to see because part of that monza fun was was watching like you know the high speed and the heavy braking and them like bouncing over these curbs made it quite spectacular but it seems like they can that it's going to be interesting in in qualifying how much maybe that's why a lot of drivers were pushing the limits so much because they could fly over curbs and things yeah, because they were learning the new sort of layout between turns one and two and how you can ride the curb. I, mean, I saw Ham one of a slow-mo replay of Hamilton at one point basically mounting the curb completely almost. Yeah. It was um, a bit strange to see, but I I'm exactly of the same opinion that it's... You know, Monza is such an old, classic, historical track, and especially Ascari in those few corners... It was all about threading the eye of the needle there, and now it's just, just yeet it, just send it through, and fine, it will look great, because it'll be high speed, it'll be even faster than we've ever seen through there. Uh, but sometimes it's not about the speed, it's about the the, the precision that, that drivers have to display, and um, yeah, I don't think any of the older drivers, I know Martin Brundle went on a bit of a rant about it as well, wasn't happy with how it was being sanitized and, and things like that, and I have to agree with Mont, like, there are tracks that, can have flatter curbs, fine. The newer tracks, cool, but we need to have things that differentiate character. between, between yeah. circuits, yeah, and have the character. Next question, Mega versus Primus. Do you think Colapinto has a lot of pressure on his shoulders? No, no, I don't. I think Colapinto is coming into a win-win situation right now where I hope for his sake, he does what Antonelli didn't do in free practice one, which is just learn, just, just take a few races to get completely up to speed with everything. But it has to be said in free practice too, very impressive indeed. Only a couple of tenths off Albon in 17th. If he manages to come out the blocks and just does that, it really does show that Logan Sargent did not deserve his seat whatsoever and that Albon wasn't just purely cooking. Because if Colapinto can come into the team and be a couple of tenths off Albon immediately, I know it's Monza, I know it's a short track and qualifying is t tends to be closer, but that would still be such a, uh, a huge achievement, I would say, for, for Colapinto. So, yeah, win-win because there's not really any, ex any expectations on him. Yeah, he's not fighting for a seat because they've already got their drivers locked in. And and like we did when we did our emergency podcast, it is it is win-win because there there is literally no expectation. Um, I think a lot of people will expect, you know, that maybe just casually observe, observe the sport will go, oh, well, you know, he's going to finish probably qualify last and it's going to be difficult for him um so anything higher than that 
even like get into Q2, it'd be a massive statement. So, yeah, I think a, a fantastic Friday for Colapinto, and uh, apart from the off, but he, he managed to save it. So, be interested to see how he does tomorrow. And finally, let's because we didn't really speak about it, well, we didn't speak about it because we recorded predictions before the uh, driver switch. Where does Colapinto qualify? I'm going to go 18th. I'm going to go. I reckon he gets into Q2. I, I'm going to say 14th. Okay. All right. Collar, collar cooking. Love it. All right. <laughs> that is it. Tommy, what are your final thoughts? Bring on Monza Quali and let's hope that uh, we don't get any. I say we don't get any silly shenanigans like we've seen in, in the junior categories today where they were no one wanted to uh, like accelerate away because they all want the slipstream. Um, but also, it does make it quite insane and a kind of insane thing to behold, doesn't it? It does. Uh, fingers crossed, uh, no silly antics. We all want it to be safe, of course, because, uh, yeah, F3 was absolutely ridiculous. Farcical. How they had about 10 cars between Lesmo 1 and Lesbo, Lesmo 2. And they split it up, didn't they, into two qualifying sessions to to try and stop that from happening, and it still happened. So they basically just had two qualifying sessions of yeah. them both doing it. Uh, <laughs> so utterly stupid. ridiculous. Um, so... I don't know how they're going to stop it for Formula One because they're not going to want to lead again. Hamilton was out there in free practice at one point saying, I need the toe man. So, uh, yeah, it's probably going to be chaos, but I'm, we'll be here. We'll be live on Twitch, ready to watch it all, and we will see you very soon. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.